Hello, everybody. Thanks for coming out this morning. You could have been anywhere else in the world, but you're here with us, and we appreciate that. Now let's get this bread. Recording live from somewhere. This is one and done. Get out the insurance cards. Get out the copays. The office is open, my friends. Brought to you by DrRoto.com. It's time once again for everybody to come aboard that green screens media train. Welcome to One and Done, your fast break of college basketball in formacion. And we are powered by the galaxies. No, the universe's greatest websites. And that website is found at drroto.com. I'm your humble host. My name is Jay Heinrich, and I happen to be the conductor of the aforementioned Green Screens Media Train. Find me on X at Dr. William Cannon. Follow me, and I will smash that follow back button. That is what I do. Now let's get right to one of the absolute best in the business to do it, one of the best college basketball minds you will see today, the man, the myth, the legend. It is El Capitan Him. Self, the captain of the Green Screens Media Ship. I do the train, he does the ship. Follow him <laughs> on X at MC Holland 34, the OG Money Mike, Mr. Mike Holland. Mike, what it do, baby? What it do, man? Um, this is the well, this should be the final day of the regular season, but we have Big Ten action tomorrow. <laughs> so, tomorrow's technically the final day of the regular season, but uh, I'm excited to talk about the slate. It, uh, it's got a it's got a bunch of weird and quirky stuff going on with it, and I wouldn't have it any other way. It's been a great season, uh, kind of a roller coaster over the last couple of weeks. Super hot a couple of weeks ago. Last week, not so great on DraftKings, but the prize picks really heated up. I'm sure we we're crushing that. So, yeah, I'm just ready to dive in, man. And uh, looks like we already got some comments flowing through. Jason B, of course, jumping in, saying he truly appreciates. <laughs> us meeting his expectations uh, starting 15 minutes or later. Absolutely appreciate you guys waiting for a lift. Jeremy here, morning, fellas. Great day for basketball. Leon is back. Appreciate you coming back, Leon, saying good morning. And Jason B asking, does Eric (laughs) pilot the plane? We're not sure what Eric really does. Uh, (laughs) He's usually on the moon most of the time. He uh, he's kind of a jack of all trades, I guess we could say. Yeah. Jack of all trades and master of a few as well. Follow that guy in those Twitter streets at Fantasy Nav. And of course, our guy at The Real Napier as well. Napsy Hustle doing things on the socials, getting you with shorts, hitting you with bets. And we'll cover a few of those. We are, we dropped one this morning uh, already as, as Aunt the Kid hops in. What's up? What's that? Thanks for hopping in with us. And always good to see you. <laughs> always good to see everybody in here. But let's not waste any time, man. This is a 12 game slate. This morning, 5K to first pull-up jumper and the old $30 king of the bracket seat, number 54. We're tipping off at noon on the East Coast today. Mike, these totals are absolutely all over the map. A few games and teams that we can probably just throw away, to be honest with you. A bunch of games in the mid to low 130s, just maybe not so much. (laughs) <laughs> uh, value seems to be okay so far from what our projections are showing a lot of secondary type plays up front and, and we're going to have to wait for some injury news ah yes old injury news of course um yeah i mean if you want to build stars and scrubs right we, you, you got to have a couple of value plays in there i think a couple of these that we're going to talk about today are going to be very popular and i've been getting beat up on some value plays right we had the damian dunn mess the other day but uh, nz was on the optimal so we've had and then that mid-tier that uh, we dropped the other day, all three of those guys went 5X. It's like Posh Alexander, Tame, and Lipsy. So it may be best to just kind of stick in the mid-tier, although we do have studs like Dalton Connect on the slate that we are going to want to jam in. Uh, we don't have the ED deal, so we don't need to determine whether or not we want to spend, you know, 20-plus percent of our salary on one feller there. And uh, that's always a, a nice thing to not have to make that decision. But yeah, I'm with you. The value is kind of okay. Um, last five, 10 minutes, um, especially on the weekends, we've been getting uh, some interesting people that are uh, ruled out. So we'll see if that kind of happens here. But man, I'm, I'm, I'm a little bit in the mid tier a little bit here. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see where we kind of go from this. Obviously, we've got a couple hours until lock. Talk about guys getting ruled out. And there's also been guys that we thought would be out that all of a sudden are showing up and playing the full complement of minutes, you know? So, yeah, that's insane, uh, man. 
Mama Rock's hopping in there. Morning, peeps. So late. Hey, that's all right. We're everybody. It's okay to be to the tardy party sometimes. Uh, you know, <laughs> we do that every so often here, every day. It's just okay on one and done. But we appreciate Mama Rock showing up. Mama Rock was ha- hashtag farm chores. Oh man, get, feeding get the squirrels. In, yeah, <laughs> feeding the squirrels and the old. Uh, now, what do you do out there, Mama Rock? Give give us an example of what a morning on the farm looks like. We would love to hear about that in the chat. Let us know what you guys are all up to this morning, guys and gals. Of course, let us know what you're up to this morning as we're preparing for this slate, tipping off at noon. Let's go right to the core four, as we like to do on these live before locks. Going to hit the core four and more because we give you the cash and tournament cores. These are the four pillars to start working your lineups around. So uh, go ahead and start with the cash core and then hit us with the tournament core as well. Yeah, we'll, uh, we'll jump right into a cash core here. We're going to start with uh, Santiago Vescovi from Tennessee at 4,600. This uh, Tennessee squad here is uh, going to be very, very popular. I think Vescovi is going to be a popular value-saving option. Had a good game against them last time, and this total was insane in the first matchup, and it's projecting very, very well uh, today. Got 163 implied total again. Um, so Santiago Vescovi, good for cash or tournaments. Dan Skilling's here, the uh, guard from Cincinnati's 6,200 to smash spot against West Virginia. Uh, he's playing you know, 30 minutes, taking a lot of shots, has the ball in his hands a ton at West Virginia. Very, very porous on the defensive end. Wade Taylor, the guard from the Aggies here at 7,500. At Ole Miss, um, we know that he's one of the better players in the SEC, a guy that we were playing in the 8K, mid-8K range. Getting 7,500 against an Ole Miss defense that uh, – you know, it's, it's it's nothing to be worried about. So we like Wade Taylor for cash. Love his floors. The guy Ziegler uh, from Tennessee at 8K. You know Ziegler's going to be in the cash core because um, you know Dalton Connect's going to be in the tournament core. But like I mentioned, I mean, these Tennessee guys, uh, basically one through four on this call, really one through five, when all the starters are essentially in play on this one. So for cash, we're looking at Vescovy, Skillings, Taylor, and Ziegler. We flip it over. We'll look at tournaments here. We'll put Vescovy right back in there at 4,600. There are other tournament options. Uh, you can look at Momsilovich you can, from Iowa State in an interesting spot. You can also look at Obaseki from Texas A&M, um, also a sub-5K guy uh, that you can look at for tournaments and other options, and we'll see what the value opens up here. But look at Vescovy, Matthew Morell at 6,300 uh, going up against Texas A&M. Absolutely burned us at 15% the other day. Um, gets the price decrease. Have to love it. He's at home. Texas A&M's defense has just been okay. Uh, but definitely uh, people are going to jump off of this morale train <laughs> after he was throwing up on the sideline, uh, not feeling well, and only played a few minutes in that first game. John L. Davis sits here at 8,100. I know I said mid-tier right for tournaments, but if the uh, value opens up, you're going to want to look at core pillar plays from the uh, Stars and Scrubs type lineup. So John L. Davis at 8,100, playing against Memphis. Watched that entire first time they played. Didn't play very well. I didn't shoot very well and still ended up with a decent game. So I'm looking at John L. Davis to bounce back uh, at home here against Memphis. And then Dalton Connect, 8,300 against Kentucky. What else do you need to say other than it's Dalton Connect and it's a pace-up spot? And he's going to be very, very popular. But uh, – if you fade them, you're probably fading 45 to 50 fantasy points. So um, we know that Kentucky's backcourt uh, loves to give up fantasy points. So that is the cash in the uh, tournament core fours. Loving that. Loving that as always. We've got somebody in there that you will see when we finally release our – we did our, our Power 6 – uh, all conference teams on mm-hmm. one and done. We did the old vote on that the other day, so we'll be dropping those here soon. Connect is, you know, we may see him on it. Maybe, you know, <laughs> probably. He might be on there. Probably. He's, yeah, okay, he's there. <laughs> Nape, Nape C. Hustle up and in there with the fire emojis, fire cores. We appreciate you, Nape. Uh, all right. Nice uh, core fours there, Mike. Let's get to the rundown on this 12 gamer again, reminding everybody that you. Lock, first lock, everything is at noon on the East Coast, 9 a.m. on the West. First game we're going to cover here is Alabama. Sorry, yeah, Alabama hosting Arkansas here. Alabama 16-point favorites at home, a 174-point implied total. Don't like the big blowout, uh, you know, sort of hovering maybe here, but you do like the implied 
total for sure. This is the first time these two teams have met this year, Mike. So go ahead and start with the Razorbacks, I guess, and then hit Bama. Do I have to hit the Razorbacks, man? This is uh, I mean, this is it. It's, this is it right here, man. I think we got maybe one more slate, so they get bounced in the uh, the SEC tournament, and then we never have to talk about these guys again. But it starts with Khalif Battle. Um, look, he put up 44, which finally broke the streak of three straight 50 pieces. Um, he's still 9,300. I don't. I mean, 45 plus, right? Like, I don't think he's gonna be very popular with the 8K range being very popular. I just mentioned John L. Davis. Dalton Connect, people are going to want to get to those guys. So Khalif Battle, uh, not going to be owned on the slate. You hate that it's such a huge blowout here. So that was definitely worrisome. So more of a contrarian tournament type play. Arkansas can keep this game a little bit closer. It's going to be because Khalif Battle and Tremont Mark are going off on the offensive end. So contrarian tournament play, I might have him in one lineup here. Mark, he's 7,900. Um. Another contrarian, contrarian tournament option. I'm, I'm not too excited. If I'm going to go all out, I think I'm just going to play battle up at the top if I'm doing anything up at the top on this Arkansas side. Uh, you know, he's had a 40-piece, and, and and that was that that nice spot that they had there against Kentucky. This game does profile to score a ton of points. So, Tremont Mark, like, he's in the player pool. I don't think that I'm going to get to him. There's these other guys here. I mean, the value guys are there. LL is 5,200. I'm not going to that. Jeremiah Davenport, somewhat interesting at 4,700. Uh, putting up a 19 and a 22 in the last two. The minutes are starting to tick up. Almost got, you got nearly 30 minutes in the last game. So uh, Jeremiah Davenport, I think at 4,700 is uh, definitely an interesting option. Uh, I would much rather have him as a stack where you play like someone like him and, and battle together. Uh, because you need this game to stay close for for some of these guys to to, to pay off. Um, so forty seven hundred here, Jeremiah Davenport's okay on the Alabama side. I mean Arkansas eleventh in defensive efficiency and SEC play, really giving up the three ball. I like Mark Sears eighty eight hundred. Uh, somehow got to uh, you know into the mid thirties in that uh, in that Florida spot, which was a game that was just all over the place. Um, he only had like two fantasy points by like the three minute mark in the first half, which was super annoying. Uh, so Mark Spears at uh, Spears, Mark Sears at 8,800. Definitely interesting. Think he can reach back and throw up a 40 to 45. The problem with that is, is that obviously this could turn into an absolutely one sided affair. So we may see some other guys hit the floor here. He may not get his high 30s minutes, but if it stays close, you have to believe that Mark Sears at 8,800 and there is. Another contrarian tournament type option. Uh, Aaron Estrada thinks is going to be a little bit more popular. You can save four hundred dollars. He's been playing very well. Um, you're going to need all the salary that you can get. So uh, eighty four hundred Aaron Estrada, I guess, is just okay for me. I would rather pay the four hundred dollars and get to Mark Sears, uh, Grant Nelson at uh, sixty three hundred, and all these other guys. It's just kind of annoying. Like Latrell Wright's a little, a little, a little interesting at five k, but I don't. Outside of the top two studs on really either side, I don't um I don't have much interest, Jay, in this uh <laughs> in this game, even though the implied total is 174 points. Uh, anybody that you're maybe targeting in this uh, spot? I don't I don't blame you. The only one that you didn't mention, uh, Makai Mitchell at 6600, is just the up and down. It's been like literal roller coaster, Jekyll and Hyde, whatever you want to call it. Like is you don't know what you're going to get. We saw the 37 uh, points out uh, the last time out, I should say, 47 five games ago. But the the issue here is that the floor is is single digits as we, is, as recently so as three games <laughs> ago. So if, especially in the higher part of the mid-tier here at 6,600, when you're looking at mid-tier options, it's yeah, okay, like large field GPP option probably, but that's, that's all of these Arkansas guys. So it's kind of hard to – really justify doing that. I mean, I don't, I don't think he's going to be super owned. I, I, th I don't think he's going to be very popular. I, I think that you can find a way to sneak him in to get different, but it's just be aware that this is a, an extremely volatile play. <laughs> Buyer beware yeah, exactly. <laughs> on, this, on this game in general. <laughs> yeah. Just in general, even with the high total, right. It's just, yeah. it's tough to be able to, you know, spin the wheel and figure out uh, what the gim what the gimmick's going to be in that one. So, Good stuff there on the first one. Let's move on now to Georgetown on the road at St. John's. Another huge uh, spread here, an 18-point spread. St. John's is the home favorite, of course. 156-point implied total, 
St. John's won the, the first matchup 90 to 85. So these two teams have shown that they can, uh, that they can score a bunch of points, uh, real life points, which, uh, you know, then uh, creates fantasy points. As, is that how, is that how that works? <laughs> I believe, I believe it, the game is actually played and then the fantasy points come ah, after that. I think gotcha. it's not known before the game is played first. Uh, for St. John's in the first one, Dingle had 22 points. Soriano had a double double with 10 and 10. And Jenkins had 15, 3, and 5. For Georgetown, Epps had 31, 3, and 7 the last time out. So let's start there with Epps. Like I was saying, 51.25 fantasy points the first like time that. out for Epps. I like that. Love him for GPBs, although he's probably going to garner some ownership. Uh, he's been one of the bright spots for for the Hoyas this year in a season that has not had very many bright spots at all. He might be the only one that <laughs> they've had. Uh, so, yeah, Epps definitely has to be someone we consider at 7,300 here. With that upside, Mike, do you like anyone from Georgetown? Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, have, I like Epps, too. The problem is I don't – I'm nervous about his ownership. Jason B saying that Jordan Epps fired today. Yeah, I mean, I was on Epps. I think he was. I think he was six percent um, on the slate that they uh, had their last matchup, and I think I finished sixth or seventh with him. So, I think people are going to look at the game log, see that Epps went off for fifty. That was at home. Now he's on the road. It's a huge, huge spread. Uh, St. John's obviously in des- oh, desperation mode. The last four in, so they are in desperation mode here. Um, a little worried about people just just absolutely going to the well there uh, for Epps. So like like some pivots around him, but I'll, I'll have him in some lineups. I think on these other Georgetown guys like Dontre Styles, he's six K and he just he plays a pile a pile of minutes. So uh, more of a like pivot here. I mean, played forty minutes in the last game against Providence. You know, the upside really hasn't shown its face very often here recently. But you know that he has 30-plus if everything kind of goes right for you. Now, St. John's defense has been a little bit better over the last couple of weeks, but I think this is still kind of an interesting spot for Styles. Now, Brumball actually had a decent game against uh, these guys last time out too. He's also 6K. Uh, I would classify him as, you know, taking a, a minor jump here, uh, transferred from Texas after red shirting. So we're very familiar with him in these parts. Has flashed 30 fantasy point upside, played 37 minutes in that first matchup. Took nine shots, had seven assists, put up 30 fantasy points. I think he's kind of sneaky, very, very sneaky. If you want to get off Epps and you don't think Epps maybe hits that 40 fantasy point ceiling, you want to get into Brumball who can get you, you know, 28 to 30. You create that leverage, but Epps is going to be a, a very solid play. Like St. John's going to have a tough time uh, containing him. It's really from a, it's really from a roster construction standpoint where you can save some coin uh, and maybe get away from a popular Epps, which is anybody popular on Georgetown, it starts to get pretty, pretty scary. So, uh, yeah, I mean, on this St. John side, Jay, um, I mean, everybody gets a boost here because it's Georgetown. It's just like it's just like when we played DePaul. It's, but the thing is with the pricing now on – St. John's because they've been mm-hmm. playing so well. It's 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 going back the other way. Like Dan Jenkins, seventy seven hundred. Uh, I think he's a fine tournament play. Um, I would say he's okay for cash if the spread wasn't that big. But we're seeing the huge spread. Only played thirteen minutes against the Paul because they beat him by thirty, and I was at the Paul. <laughs> now they're at home against Georgetown. Uh, you know he had twenty eight in the first one. Uh, wasn't very aggressive in that first one, but we know he has upside there. Chris Ledlam uh, coming off the 44 piece. So unfortunately we're not going to get mid six K Chris Ledlam, which would have been fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to get 7,400 Chris Ledlam, which uh, I guess is still kind of nice for tournaments because you know, a lot of people are going to be nervous to pay that type of price tag for him. But honestly, like to, I just feel like it's going to be very, very spread out distribution wise on the St. John's team. Jordan Dingles included in there. Like all these guys, it just feels like it's going to be spread all across the uh, board here for these guys, which actually limits some of their ceilings, man. What do you think about Soriano? Um, this is a pretty decent spot for him. Yeah, he's burned us a ton, though, and I kind of felt like you were going to leave him to me because he's burned us so damn much this year. He's, <laughs> yes. he's, he's got to be in play, though. Uh, obviously, this is a, a tournament play. I'm, I'm not really advocating for Soriano in a cash game here at all. <laughs> no. uh, and not in the least bit. Uh, but the volatility is there, obviously. But, uh, yeah, I think if you wanted to – I would understand why you would go to Soriano in this spot. I don't know that I'm necessarily going to. Um, I think this is an instance of a guy being 
especially with the way that he's priced a guy being a much more effective real life basketball player for his team than a, than a fantasy player for DK purposes uh, because he does mean a lot to this team, but it doesn't necessarily, it doesn't always produce, but you know what we are going to, to say today uh, we're going to drop a couple of prize picks here that we, these are the prize picks that uh, we, we, we dropped these earlier on, on Twitter. Is that right, Mike? Uh, I believe was so. This the, not, yeah. Was this the one that Nate, was this Nate? Uh, I think he did the bets, but yeah, the we'll bets. get these okay, out today but, too. Well, we'll get these prize picks out. The first prize pick we're going to go to is uh, Soriano more than 8.5 boards. So jot that down. Here you go. You get your notebook here, right here. Jot it down. Soriano more than 8.5 boards. He had 10 last game against them. So uh, we're, we're feeling like Soriano is going to hit the over there. 8.5 boards for Soriano on the prize picks. Other than that, other, I don't – I'm with you, Mike. I'm not extremely excited yeah. about about this St. John side or really anybody else other than Epps. But like you said, it's it's going to be – like, There's going to be a couple of guys that go off, but I don't know that the price tag is going to yeah, allow us a, to get ceilings. They scored 175 points the last time these two teams <laughs> played, and now the projected total is 156. Yeah. So, you know, is, 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 yeah, F's got the 51 the last time, but do we really think that they're going to get to 175 points? It'd be great if it did. If you could tell me right now, let's load up. <laughs> right. It's, it's going to be tough. It's going to be tough for sure. Mama Rock's hopping in the live chat. The morning. Oh, we got the more the, the farm run down here. The morning <laughs> is full of turkeys, chickens, and feeding them milking goats. Nice. Finish with the dog. You got that dog in you. And bottle feeding squirrels, possums, and raccoon babies. That's, Man, that's a... A lot going on. <laughs> Doing the, that's that's what I'm talking about. That's the production Rock. of that's, like you know uh, Dalton Connect out there, right? Like, <laughs> I know high Mama, usage for Mama Rocks on the Mama farm. Rocks going out there like a 38 percent usage rate out there, <laughs> and uh, you know guaranteed like Mama Rocks would be priced like Edie. I feel like <laughs> we'd have to make that decision. Good stuff, Mama Rocks. Thanks for sharing that with you, with us. We definitely appreciate that. Let's keep the live chat rolling. First time, long time, whoever you are. Drop us something in the live chat. Let us know you're here. We like the fly, the flyer. I, I I crossed over flame and fire there. <laughs> the fire emojis. Drop them in the in the live chat if you are if you're gonna be on fire today. If you're gonna see those flames in your lineups as we move on now to Memphis on the road at Florida Atlantic, a 161 point implied total. The Tigers won their first matchup uh, in at Memphis a few weeks ago by four points, 78 to 70. For the Owls, for the Owls, Golden had 22 points and eight boards. And for Memphis, uh, Jones had 25 and 11. Nice double-double there for Jones in that one. These are the top two teams in offense in the AAC and a pace-up spot for FAU at home. Mike, where are you looking in this rematch? Yeah, this one's juicy. It's juicy, but you look at the man, the pricing, too, on this Memphis side. Like, David Jones is always a, always a smash, man. I mean – 250 pieces. This is like in the last three games, three in the last five. Like this is Khalif battle territory. <laughs> um, not really. This has been David Jones territory all year, which is, you know, we probably should be 10, 10, 2, 10, 3. So he just never really gets to that 10K price tag, which is okay. Um, you know, if we get late value or if we're feeling com comfortable getting two value plays in that we'll talk about today. You can slot in David Jones for sure. Um, you know, obviously at 25 and 11, <laughs> Eric saying, be still in my heart, as uh, one of the greatest pivots in DFS history uh, by Eric a few seasons ago when he was at St. John's. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the price tag is kind of annoying. So 9700 but you know you're going to get the production. Very rarely does he go under 30 fantasy points. So David Jones, if you can get to him, absolutely. Uh, the rest of the squad, like, I'm not too interested in Tomlin at 7,700. I know he's been playing very, very well, and now the price is starting to creep up. Walton, 5,600. Jordan, 5,400. Not interested in these guys. Uh, but I'm really looking at Javon Quinterly here at 7,400. Uh, Quinterly, obviously, uh, kind of an enigma in the DFS streets. Uh, a guy that your profile is being able to put up 30 to 40 fantasy points consistently. A lot of the times – doesn't quite get to 30. I mean, he usually lives in the mid 20s a lot of the time. Now, recently, with Memphis needing to, uh, after the complete collapse in the middle of the season that has them out of the tournament, they need to go on this run. Um, and it starts by obviously knocking off Florida Atlantic, get some momentum heading into the AAC tournament. 
I think Javon Quinterly is kind of a large field option at 7,400 is certainly interesting. I'm more in love, Jay, with this Florida Atlantic side, though. They're going to get a stock boost because Memphis gets their shot blocked. They also turn the ball over a ton. So I'm looking at John L. Davis to to really to really kind of go off here. Um, I mentioned in the uh, breakdown of our core fours earlier, um, he has a core piece for tournaments. I watched this entire game. Couldn't get any shots to fall. I just wasn't really his game, but still managed to – you know, to, to have a decent game in that one. Uh, we know he has 40 fantasy point upside. I'd love that upside at 8,100. You absolutely have to. I'm smashing the 18 and a half points um, on prize picks. So definitely go out there and get that 18 and a half for sure. He's, I think he's a lock to score 20 real life points. So at 8,100, I feel like John L. Davis, probably the priority on this side. It's really a big three on this side for me, Jay. It's John L. Davis, Elijah Martin, you know, Vladislav Golden, because I'm so high on Davis today, I'm not really going to Elijah Martin. Uh, are you going to any three of these guys? And, you know, what say you on maybe the Memphis side? You got a favorite play on that side? Yeah, I think uh, I think Golden has to be in the conversation as a, as a really, like, a, a solid cash type play. He's been basically 4X plus at this price recently, so – that's we like that in cash for sure. Yeah. The the thing that I that I like the most, the thing that stands out for him today, six percent uh shot block rate. Memphis is three hundred first in opponent shot block rate. So <laughs> pick up a couple of swats here and there. Uh I really like Golden's chances to go at least four X here. He had thirty one fantasy points the last time these two played. Uh the the issue with the tournament with wanting to play him in a tournament is I feel like the minutes the, the limited minutes sort of cap his upside. So annoying. It's, so it's annoying. one of those things where if I if you could tell me Golden was going to play 32 minutes, this is – it's insta-smash live. Yeah, I like, can tell you he will not because I don't, he hasn't touched 30 minutes the entire season, so it's freaking so, annoying. Like, so what are we doing? This is why you can probably just slot him in as that solid uh, cash play here and uh, and then move on but again w- would love to be able to know i mean he put up 45 a couple of games ago like you know it's in the bag but who knows so again that uh, might hit the john l davis more than 18.5 uh real life points there and i'm taking joel soriano more than eight and a half boards there so if you're locking in you need a little double double there that's oh that looks so nice look at that <laughs> Soriano more than eight and a half boards and John L. Davis more than 18.5 real life points there. Loving the price picks today for those two. That's about it for me on that one, man. I mean, yeah, I would, I would love to get to Jones. Um, you, <laughs> you know, would love 50 to, fancy points. From I, Jones. Would love, I would just, I would like that. <laughs> um, it'd be okay. And we, Javon Quinterly has been someone that we we talk we've talked about a ton for year for a couple of years. You know, he's always yeah. Again, I'm not, yeah, exactly the roller coaster, the the peaks and valleys, the ups and downs. But you know, it's in the bag. So, um, but yeah, golden for sure for me in a cash game. So let's move on now to oh, Mama Rock's saying that's why we that's why uh, why we see we have that why they have to get that bread. Yeah, we understand. We get it now. I gotta gotta feed the the squirrels. Got and the bills. And Vancouver, babies. <laughs> Pay the phone bills, then maybe you could chill. There you go. Good stuff there. On a Saturday morning, as we move on now to Texas A&M, traveling to Ole Miss, a 145-point implied total here. They squared off in late January when Ole Miss uh, got the win on the road, 71 to 68, so scored 139 points there. 145 points implied in this one. Though Mike, with uh, who? What, what's happened last time? With Ole Miss, Murray had 16, two and five, and for the Aggies, Taylor, of course, he's been good all year for them. Taylor had 36, 30 points, six boards, and three dimes. Mike, start with the Aggies. Do we got to? Uh, do we need to get in there with with Wade Taylor? And, and what else should we do with those fighting Texas Aggies? Yeah, I think in I think in cash games you have to get the Wade Taylor. Um, a guy that we profiled in our cash core, just at seventy five hundred. Like, what, what are we doing here? I know, I know he hasn't been, I know it hasn't been great, right? But <laughs> he's just so, he's so good. I mean, playing in just piles and piles of minutes, taking double digit shots, has a high assist rate, has a good steal rate. 
Like you're gonna like for cash games, you want the floor. You want the floor. So absolutely love the floor with Wade Taylor. I don't know that I'll mess around with him in tournaments. Uh, I'll look at Tyree Shradford for tournaments. He's 7,400, someone that has been flashing, uh, you know, 5X upside at this price point, 33, 38, 36 fantasy points in the last three games. A guy that really likes to attack the rim, has a very high rebounding rate, um, you know, because he's on the floor for the high 30s minutes like Wade Taylor. He's going to pick up some counting stats like assists. He's going to get some steals, maybe pick up a cheap block. But the field goal attempts, 15, 17, 19, 16, and 16. <laughs> He's just taking a pile, a pile of shots here. Uh, Obaseki, yes, uh, Mama Rocks, why is Obaseki popping in the projections? Well, Obaseki is now starting. Um, he's 4,800. <laughs> A lot of people are going to go here. Uh, I'm a little nervous, but, you know, 22 fantasy points, 28 fantasy points in the uh, last two games here. The minutes have obviously crept up, uh, you know, since starting 27 and 29 in the last two. Uh, A solid player, like, overall profile outside of, like, the fantasy game. For 4,800, yeah, uh, you want to get up to connect. You want to get up to David Jones. You you know, you want to get up to some of these high-priced St. John's guys. I mean, this is a way to do it. 4,800, Manny Obaseki. Um, feels a little trappy, uh, but obviously at 4,800, when you're flashing 20-plus fantasy upside, you're going to garner some ownership, and I'm going to have to go here on a few lineups. I also love it as a stacking partner uh, with Tyrese Radford in tournaments as a stacking partner with uh, Wade Taylor in cash settings. So uh, those are the three I would be looking at. Anderson Garcia, just okay. Uh, more of a cash type play. On this uh, Ole Miss side, Jay, what um, what do you got over here on this Ole Miss side, man? Do you well, like it at all? I mean, the Aggies have been pretty solid defensively, but I, I would say that the pricing for Ole Miss is, um, let's just say it's intriguing. Right. Let's. I think that's, that's. We'll just call it intriguing. So, like the core attorney play Morel, obviously at, at 6,300. We got burned by him, and he tried to play when Mike was. Mike was talking about earlier. You were saying how <laughs> he was yakking on the sidelines. He tried what to. What are we doing? Like, I, it's, I I like the warrior mentality, I guess, uh, but I don't like it when you know you could have just set that one out, my guy. But <laughs> it happens. Uh, the the good thing. I guess to come out of it, get a bucket in the mop, sir. This is a Wendy's. <laughs> uh, no, but with Morel, his price is tanked now, and he has legit yeah. thirty-five to forty fantasy point upside. So love him as that mid-tier tourney option. Twenty-five percent shot rate, fourteen percent assist rate, and super efficient from the field. Mike, a uh, couple, a couple other guys on this side, maybe Breakfield, Murray, anybody else for for Ole Miss. Well, for tournaments, I'm I'm like you, man. I'm with Morel, right? Uh, especially, I, I got to go back to the well um, since he absolutely burned us. But it's the price tag and, and his upside. I mean, Breakfield at 6,900. It's okay. Uh, very cash worthy over the last four, 26, 31, 29, 26. I mean, you, you absolutely love that in the cash setting. Um, they are at home, which is uh, you know a little bit of a boost there for them. Jalen Murray sits $100 cheaper. Um, now with Morel going out, you saw – Jalen Murray just take a ton of shots, play. I mean, you know, he plays a pile of minutes anyway. You also saw Brandon Murray um, get a, a ton of run there. You know, these guys that are up here for, for Ole Miss, like, we knew it. I think um, I think Cam said it the other day, like, why are all these Ole Miss guys cheap? Well, it's because it's because they were all going to tank, except for basically Jalen Murray in the last game. So, uh, I don't think he's not going to take 21 shots if Morell's playing. Obviously, we believe Morell's in. We don't have any reason to believe that he's not in. Uh, eight for 21. I mean, it's a guy that usually takes eight to 10, 11, maybe 12 shots in a game. So not going to have to do that much heavy lifting on this side. So, uh, man, n- nothing else, man. I think I'm just looking at Matthew Morell on this side. I'm, I'm not very interested in anything else here. Yeah, that makes sense. Jason feels like Morell's a trap. Like, it's a trap. Yeah, it's a trap. <laughs> I, I understand. I understand the hesitancy, but this the upside at this price is is too. Yeah. It's just, he has forty it's, fantasy point upside. Like just, they, they they can they dangle in the carrot in front of me, and I'm I'm chasing it. I don't. He care. he also said he's not using his COVID years. So this is his final home game. This so is it. He's gonna just, it's, it's gonna erupt. And Jason saying good morning to Mister 
the blue <laughs> mr the oh, blue God. mr the blue i love that so much fantastic fantastic yeah i can see it morel might feel like a trap but we're, i'm rolling with him i'm rolling i'm doing it let's go now to uh country roads take me home to the place i belong west virginia 12 point underdog on the road <laughs> oh my god 144 points implied total in this game. West Virginia, uh, with a narrow win the first time these two played. For Cincinnati, uh, Lakosha said 12 points. And then for West Virginia, Edwards, their dog, 25. The dog. And 25 and 10, but, is that good? Uh, that, is, that, is, that is pretty good. Uh, I would say that that's okay. Well, we got to start with Jesse Edwards, I think, here. And... Giving the flowers out today, credit where credit is due. Mama Rocks called his blow-up game the last time out. So, uh, And Edwards, again, coming off that huge 60-point game against TCU. He smashed Cincy for 48 fantasy points the last time. But now Price is up. He's on the road. Big-time underdog on the road. Uh, I mean, large large field yeah, nice. player pool at, at, at worst. You know, you know, you see what's in the bag. You see the sixty points, but it's it's going to be tough to get back to that one, I think. But Mama Rocks did call that one the last time out, so props there. And mm. uh, yeah, what else? What else for the Mountaineers, Mike? Uh -oh. and, then, and then hit Cincinnati as well. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll look at Raekwon Battle. He's uh, sixty nine hundred. Hasn't played well in the last few games, but the minutes have still been there. So, uh, you know, I'm okay with it. Like. It's more of a throwaway side uh, on this West Virginia side. I'm like, you. Yeah, I don't know if I want to pay up for Edwards at that price tag on the road at Cincinnati. Uh, but Battle, you know, a guy that typically plays mid-30s minutes, only played, only played 25 uh, in that game against TCU. But he has to take a lot of the shots for this team to be successful. We'll see if West Virginia maybe plays for you know, a little bit more of next year, get some other guys out there. So a little concerning uh, for this West Virginia side. But on the Cincinnati side, I, I definitely like it. I mean, West Virginia is last in Big 12 play in defensive efficiency, giving up nearly 150 points, 115 points per 100 possessions, so 14th in the Big 12. Uh, they're giving up the two ball. They're giving up the three ball. They are giving up a 60% opponent assist rate. They also themselves turn the ball over at a 20% clip in Big 12 play, so – Cincinnati projected to score 78 points here. Uh, definitely want to look at some of these guys. Mama Rocks is asking about the, the question between uh, Newman. Uh, I'm assuming that's uh, Bondego there. I'm not really interested in either one. The guy that I'm interested in, one of our core plays, is Dan Skillings uh, coming in here. He's coming off a 31 piece, you know, dealt with a, a little bit of a, you know, some injury there uh, a couple of weeks ago. So, uh, a guy that I think is easily going to hit the 30 fantasy point mark. Um, man, as far as like his future, like he's going to be a stud in this league next year. Uh, very young, very raw player, but he's really broken out uh, in the later half of the season. So you love Dan Skillings here as a core type play. Uh, Day Thomas, a little interesting at 6,300. I mean, he saved 200 bucks off of probably popular Skillings, I would imagine. And a guy that has flashed close to 30 fantasy point upside, he's playing, you know, low 30s minutes. He's taking double-digit shots. I mean, he has a high assist rate, uh, has a decent steal uh, rate. We talked about how poorly West Virginia is um, on that side of the ball. So, for me, Jay, like, I mean, you look at this game, and, and it's more on the Cincinnati side. I don't, I don't know that I really care about playing anybody from West Virginia. It's really going to be looking at Dan Skillings uh, and, and Day Day Thomas. And maybe you could look at Bondego, but – his upside at 6,100, like it feels kind of wonky over the last couple of weeks. So uh, that's all I got, man. You got anything else from this game? You back? You remember? Remember when we used to pay 8K for Kirk Creasa? <laughs> yeah. You remember that? <laughs> yeah. Back in the day. Back in the way, day, man. Way back in the day. Uh, yeah, no, I'm not skillings, like you said, but I'm not really interested in a ton of stuff in this one. Edwards, it's good. You never, I mean, we're not chasing 60. Yeah, it's, we, a... <laughs> we we, it's, it's a dangerous game to play uh, when we do that. It, it probably end up closer to that, you know, 30 ish um, mark, I would say. Um, <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. You know, if you wanted to play Edwards, you know, but large tourney, 
large tournament only. For sure. Tommy Kramer with the heat in the comments here, Jay. When are you guys going to get Shaq and Barkley as guest says? Come on, man. I'm sure they have some opinions on. Yeah, they have very poor NCAA opinions. Um, but Shaq is in town here. A uh, little birdie has told us that uh, he flew in. To, he was DJing last night, I guess, here in the uh, Austin area so for South by Southwest. <laughs> yeah, that's that's DJ Diesel to you, sir. Mm -hmm. uh, there you go. There's our birdie. <laughs> oh, there's the birdie. Tried to get him. Yeah, yeah. Our guy Napesy hustles in those streets, running into everybody. I'm, I knew he. I knew. I knew he. I know he shot his shot, but it happened. It's actually funny that you mentioned that, Tommy. And yeah, Barkley is like he's one of those guys. That I don't mind him being on the set during March Madness. Like oh, hashtag, <clears throat> excuse me, trademark. Um, I don't mind him being on the set for that stuff. Uh, he, because he's honest about it, he knows why he's there. He's there for the entertainment value, and and they you know they throw him some lines here and there. So, uh, but I don't know that you know if Chuck Chuck, if you want to come on the show, we'd love to have you, my guy. We'd love to have you. We'd love to have you, Charles. Let's move on now to Oklahoma. Those land thieves, the Sooners on the road here in Austin. A 144-point implied total. Texas had the nice road victory in late January, the first time they met. Only scored 135 points between the two, though. Texas did win by 15, so they put up 75 in that one. Ace Miss, 22-4-3. and three. The first time out in DeSue had 19-10. and 10. Um, Don't know if we're going to get to see him even on the, on the court today. For Oklahoma, or for Oklahoma, the first time out, Moore had 15-5. and five. Yeah, like I was saying, DeSue is – He's not just questionable. I would say he's leaning more towards, like, you know, they don't have doubtful in college. <laughs> yeah. I, so let's say he's very extremely questionable uh, to, to play this one with the sprained knee. And McCollum on the other side has the shoulder for OU. Yeah. So what are we doing in this one? Yeah, I, well, we need to know if they're in or out because it affects the entire, the entire game here. And it's maybe a game that I do want to get into if – both guys are out. We feel pretty confident that Sue. I don't know why you would risk it in this game, um, playing him. <laughs> you're, you're firmly in on the Texas side, but we'll, we'll slide over to McCollum in the OU side. Like, if McCollum's in, he's only 6K, and we were burned because we found out, like, right when it was locking on this game that he was going to be out. I think you can look at him um, for, for large field tournaments only, I don't know that I'll go to him. I would rather him be out um, because you saw the minutes of these guys just absolutely explode. Like the front court, Jalen Moore, uh, you mentioned how he had 15 points, five rebounds in the first matchup. He played a ton of minutes. And this guy, uh, if, he, if you've ever played 30 plus minutes, like he is an absolute monster. So at 6,800, I have a little bit of interest here in, uh, in Jalen Moore. Uh, Rivaldo Soros at 6,200. Uh, got a pile of minutes again. He was playing a pile of minutes anyway. Uh, you know, three ball boost, obviously Texas last in the big 12 and opponent three point percentage. So Jalen Moore, Rivaldo Soros, two of the better three point shooters um, on this squad. But Rivaldo Soros, I mean, his minutes have been ticking up because always minutes have kind of gone away. Another guy that takes a ton of shots, but he does rebound very well. Um, picks up usually a couple of stocks uh, per game. So you can look at these guys. I think Latrade Darthur, an interesting secondary tournament type option at 4,400 uh, coming off the 25 piece, but he did have to play 41 minutes in overtime to get there. Um, doesn't take a lot of shots. He's uh, the transfer from Utah Valley. Very good score um, at 4,400, more of a secondary play. I'd rather play guys like Obaseki. Uh, I would rather play guys like the So uh, this OU side's a little bit better with McCollum out. I think I would rather go to Jalen Moore, price adjusted, even though he's the most expensive guy. Uh, Texas side, we have to look at the usuals, right? Like, I don't think this is going to play. If he's in, I don't know that I have very much interest in him. That's even at 7,400. We know he has 40, 50 point upside, but I'm not going to mess around with a guy that looked like he might have been out for the year the other day. So, kind of crossing to Sue off here. Max Aismas at 7,600. Now, when Desu's off the floor, Aismas has to do everything. Uh, 54 fantasy points in the last one. Uh, you like him to, to keep it going here. You saw that he dropped 22, 4, and 3. I like Max A. Smith for tournaments for sure. Dylan Mitchell in an intriguing spot, especially if DeSue misses. You're going to see Cunningham. People are going to go to Shedrick and Cunningham, uh, more so Shedrick than anybody. But Dylan Mitchell, I mean, he's a guy that will play close to 30 minutes, has a very high rebounding upside, just missed a double-double, eight points, 10 rebounds in the first spot here. 
He's also very super athletic, probably the most athletic player in college basketball. So he can rack up a ton of stocks in this spot. So Dylan Mitchell for tournament is also very intriguing. Uh, Caden Cedric at the 5,200 spot, Jay, like he's kind of interesting. If the sees out, I wish he was more in the 4K range. Anybody else on the yeah. squad that uh, you think you'd be clicking the button on? I'd like Shedrick at about 46, 4,700. That would be ideal there. Tyrese Hunter at 6.5K, though. Uh, another one of those up and down players. He has had two of his more, uh, two of his stronger performances of late uh, recently at 27 and 27. So 4X this price. He's going to play 33 minutes, 35, 36 minutes, honestly, in this one. Uh, and and the usage will have to come a, a little bit more to him if Desu does miss as well. He already has the 21% usage rate, 24% assist rate, and a 2.5% steal rate. So I, I would say this is because of the steady eddiness. Steady eddiness. Yeah, so we'll go with that. You know, four out of the last five, he's been at 24, 24, 27, and 27. That, that screams cash game to me not so much tourney play but i think we could definitely slot hunter at a 6.5k into our cash game thanks for hanging out with us this morning we've been trying to get through these games as quickly as possible while bringing you all the heat we got you want the smoke and we got the smoke better believe that for shell for shell make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons if you haven't show your broskies in basketball some love we appreciate y'all for being here with us you could be anywhere else in the world right now like i said on the open, but you are here with us and we appreciate you. So hit that live chat, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button and turn on those notification bells. So you don't miss anything that we are dropping. We're at one, I'm sorry, we're at 813 right now. 813. I mean, with as many of you guys that are out there watching right now, we could definitely make a push for 820 on this show. So help us out. Do your part in the green screens media universe and hit those buttons for us. As we get to a few games here, Mike, where these are some, we're going to hit some ugly totals. I mean, almost close to crossing off the game altogether. <laughs> Let, let's start with Iowa State and Kansas State. They played in late January. Iowa State won at home 78 to 67. Iowa State, uh, the old road favorite here in the Little Apple. Kaluma had 16 points for the Wildcats last time out, and uh, Iowa State. Gilbert had a double double, 15 and 13. Again, so Iowa State favorites on the road. Mike, uh, decent pricing for the Cyclones. What say you? Yeah, yeah, I know it says plus six there. Um, so yeah, they are they are six point uh, favorites on the road. Obviously, being the top ten team in the country. Uh, ugly total, like you mentioned, Jay. Uh, the pricing on Iowa State is interesting. Um, I think Keyshawn Gilbert at seven K, cash type play. I don't know that I will touch him in tournaments. He hasn't really flashed like this big upside over the last couple of weeks. A lot of people are probably going to go back to the well with Taman Lipsy at uh, 6,700. And he paid everybody off with that uh, 38 piece. You know, you love the the high steal rate with this guy. Um, you love that he's one of their primary options on offense. So can get it done in a bunch of different ways. More volatility than Gilbert, right? Like Gilbert living in the 20s, the high 20s, Lipsy. Living in either winning you a tournament at 38 fantasy points or absolutely destroying your lineup at 13 fantasy points. And that's <laughs> what you're going to get with Taman Lipsy. Um, there's not really a middle ground for him. Chris Jones, I've been playing a lot of minutes, but not really interested in him. Um, Milam Momsilovich at 5K, I think is pretty interesting. Had a good game against Kansas State last time out. So if you're looking for like a secondary type value play, I don't mind it. Like he plays close to 30 minutes. You know, he, sh he shoots some threes. He has a little bit of rebounding upside. Uh, if you can get a 20 spot out of him, you would definitely, definitely like that. Uh, you know, a couple of, a couple of questions here in the chat. Uh, Ryan Gupton. Don't know if we've seen you in here before. Appreciate the the question, right? Yeah. Hassan Ward at 3,900. Now Hassan Ward, just always a fascinating player. Transferred over from uh, VCU a, a couple of years ago. Uh, I, I just wish we could get 20 minutes uh, out of him because if you look at his, you know, per fantasy minute, I mean, even when he's playing high teens in the minutes, he's a guy that can easily get to 16 to 20 fantasy points. I think he's sneaky in tournaments for sure. Uh, you know, Mom Silovic, you know, you're going to get minutes. So you, you like that for $1,100 more, but when you're trying to get into these tournaments, I don't mind Hassan Ward as a large field uh, GPP option. Jason B saying not finding much forward value punt plays. A lot of guard options. Definitely, it looks like a five guard, uh, three forward 
type day on the Kansas State side. I mean, you're messing with the number. I know they're at home, but it's the number one defense in the Big 12, tough road environment, top three defense in the country. Mm-hmm. Perry Carter and Kaluma, they all play, you know, big minutes. Uh, so they're contrarian for tournaments at best. But if I had to pick one, I know Cam Carter's sitting here at 6,100, but Tyler Perry, I mean, 7,200. Like we know, you know, when he played for North Texas, that uh, <laughs> they played in some ugly games and he was able to yeah. put up huge fancy points and he shows. 40 to 45 fantasy point ceiling. But other than that, man, like this is, uh, this is kind of ugly, man. <laughs> yeah, Anybody that not... you would maybe, maybe think about sneaking in here? Or is it kind of just like a cross off for you? Yeah, I'm probably crossing it off. I might get to Medea there, but I don't know. Oh, that's not, it's different Tyler. Perry. <laughs> uh, I will. Uh, yeah. Perry. We, we love, I love Kaluma. I love to watch Kaluma's like real life. I like to watch him on the court. <laughs> I don't necessarily like to pay seven K flat for him. Uh, against Iowa State. Against Iowa State, yeah. Not really feeling <laughs> them. So we might we might cross that one up. In South Carolina at Mississippi State, uh, 134 point implied total. I mean, ugh, an absolute slugfest the last time out. 130 points between the two. South Carolina winning at home by four. For the Bulldogs, Smith had 13 points, and for South Carolina, Johnson had 24. These are two top 40 defenses in the country. There's there's a reason why this total is so low. <laughs> I, I don't have any – really have much interest in, in the South Carolina side. Do you? Not really. I mean, on the road, Michi Johnson's playing well. Yeah. Like, for tournaments, I guess you could go to Michi Johnson. Like, that feels ugly. You're probably going to get him at pretty low owner. I, would have, I don't know that people are going to go to much in this game. Looking at the Mississippi State side, I mean, South Carolina is just so slow. 354th in tempo. So, like, Tolu, 7,600, meh. Josh Hubbard, now 7,300. He's been playing fantastic. Um, he's in play for large field contrarian type uh, options at this price tag. But, uh, no. Did you play man, Hubbard in uh, cash? No, I don't think so. Not, no. I don't think so. 134? Yuck, man. Like, there's just other, other play. I mean, Look, like we, we got to talk about DJ Jeffries, and this has been a thing with Mississippi State that's really pissed us off, right? Like the rotations all over the place. The guys that were starting playing heavy minutes early in the season, getting injured, coming back, we don't know. Now it looks like DJ Jeffries uh, might be playing thirty plus minutes, right? We saw that last game. So fifty one hundred, like playing thirty minutes. I know he doesn't have a high shot rate, but he's a guy that can do a little bit of rebounding, can do a little bit of uh, you know handing out some dimes, but secondary option only, man. Like, it's pretty nasty because you don't know, like, if they're going to play 30 minutes, they're going to play 16 minutes. It just – it's a revolving door. Is anybody on this Mississippi State side that piques your interest? Maybe just Deshaun Davis. Jason was just talking about the the guard value. Uh, I think Davis is somebody that you can look to in, in your value player pool. The minutes have trended up in the last couple of games, 23 and 33 and like Jeffries is coming off a really nice outing against the Aggies where he had 29 uh, fantasy points in that one. The the issue for me is, is you kind of worry about the matchup <laughs> and, and just how secure those minutes are. So I, I think he's in your value player pool, like I said before, but probably more of a secondary play, a guy that you're mixing in your mass multi entries. Yeah. It's more when yeah. you're, when you're just reaching, when you need a 4.6 guy, <laughs> it, happens, it happens and, and he could get there for you. Because, like, oh, if but, you play Obaseki, like, and you're 48, and you're like, I have 90% Obaseki, like, you got to find other ways to, you know, Momsilovich yeah. at five, Deshaun Davis at four, six. I mean, there's just other ways you got to go. Yeah. So mix him in. Not not somebody necessarily as a pillar, uh, but but mix but mix Deshaun Davis in for sure. Uh, Creighton uh, on the road at Villanova. Tight one here. With the spread, only a one-point spread, but the the issue is, is the implied total here is 137 points, which are things that make you go, man. Villanova <laughs> shocked Creighton at home the first time out, 68 to 66, and that overtime. 68, 66, and overtime. In overtime, <laughs> yeah, the old, what a nail biter there. Uh, Dixon had 32 uh, real life points. Uh, Shireman had a double double, 16 and 11, and so did Alexander with 16 and 15. So big game. For him there too, like like we mentioned earlier, forty five minutes of basketball last time and got to a whopping one hundred forty two combined points there. There's some plays I think we have to consider here, Mike, but but we're gonna have to we're kind of walking on eggshells <laughs> with this one. So I guess hit start off with Creighton. Yeah, I mean it's every time Villanova's on the slate, you're like, ah, here we go. <laughs> it's gonna be one of the ugliest games you've ever seen. 
Uh, I think on the Creighton side, like it's the big three for me. I'm not looking at anybody else. Baylor Shireman sitting there at 9,400. Like you just mentioned double double, but that's a 45 minute overtime game. You know, he's going to play 38 to 40 minutes in this one. So yeah, I mean, he's okay. I don't, I don't know that you need to, to go here. I'm more interested tournament wise for Ryan Kalkbrenner. Um, Villanova is getting their shot blocked at a very, very high rate. They also struggle containing the two point line. So, uh, you know, as Shireman and Alexander kind of had the big games, kind of kind of want to zag here, uh, play a little bit of Kalkbrenner. Uh, Trey Alexander, 8,600, like he's, these guys are priced right. They're going to play 38 minutes. That's the only thing you can really say about the Creighton side is they're going to play a pile and a pile of minutes, which keeps their ceiling high. Um, but this thing can just be absolutely ugly. If we go under in this game, maybe one of these Creighton guys gets there, and that's about it. When we flip it over to the uh, Villanova side, not much over here that I want to mess around with either. Eric Dixon sitting there with that big game that he had against Cockburner. We talked about mm-hmm. the Cockburner. Remember, guys kind of step out are a little bit more mobile. Like it makes it tough on him defensively. Uh, you know, great shot blocker at the rim, but Eric Dixon likes to shoot a lot of threes. He's seventy three hundred. Hasn't done anything so in tournaments. Like he's kind of interesting because no one's going to go here. I feel like if you're just kind of like looking at what he's done recently, but him and him and more. Like they have to do the heavy lifting for this Villanova squad, and they're a last four team in, according to a lot of people. So, Jay, any interest in Dixon or uh, Justin Moore here? I like. I think you got to at least consider more at this price tag with his upside. You know, it's twenty five to thirty fantasy point upside. So at fifty eight hundred, I think you got to consider him here if you if you want to get. It's a contrarian play, though. Like this is again not somebody that you want in. <laughs> probably you're not starting you know, your lineup with justin Moore. <laughs> no but if you had you know 20 percent, 10 percent, somewhere in that range of him just mixing him in i think i like more if you want to get a little bit different like mike you were you were sort of insinuating this is a big spot for for villanova yeah and i think that these guys are gonna they're, they're gonna in if they win them. yeah so uh i think you got to consider dixon and more with, with what the upside is, but uh, I don't know. Like you said, these are just, these <laughs> these are just so <laughs> ugly games. You remember back, talk about when you when you remember things, when you get on the old, hey, do you remember? Remember when he gave us 40-plus once upon a time, did Justin yeah. Moore? Like, yeah. uh, not, not living, really. Living in the old that, days. But, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's fun Pretty to do that. Justin Moore. <laughs> it's fun to do that, yeah. And at who would – who was that against like ten or something like that? Like, <laughs> you know, he flashed it, but yeah, it, you're not starting your lineup with more, but you might have to get there uh, at fifty eight hundred. Hit those like and subscribe buttons for us, please. We appreciate y'all hanging out with us on a fine Saturday morning. If you are in Central Texas like we are, this is the this is probably like peak weather. So I'll be going outside when we're done here. Make after I set my lineups, of course, and I may just get on the phone and do it all outside, sit in the sun. We might do it. We see a, he- a heck of a lot of y'all watching live with us right now. So make sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons if you can. We appreciate you all being here with us this morning as we move on now with three games left on this slate. Kentucky at Tennessee. Uh, these are the hammer games, ladies and gents. These are going to be the ones that if we're mixing them in, the ones that are going to be coming in to close out. And this one went for a whopping 195 <laughs> points in regulation. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> quite this different. Isn't over, this isn't Villanova going to overtime and scoring 68. This was a 195 point total between these two teams the last time out with Tennessee winning on the road, of course. James had 26 points. Ziegler had 26 points and 13 dimes. My God. <laughs> First time out. Reeves. For Kentucky, had 21, and then Dillingham, of course. <laughs> Where did that come from? 35 off the pine for them. I'm going to start with that Kentucky side. It's always tough to play these guys when everybody's healthy, and it doesn't help that Kentucky has the number three defense in the country. Obviously, it didn't show last time necessarily, but this is a very good defensive team. We know that. Uh, and Reeves is the guy that I will start with. 7,700 here uh i think he's probably when you're talking about like price adjusted he's probably the safest play playing big minutes here takes a lot of shots hasn't been under 28 fantasy points in six games he's got to get extremely hot for tournaments so like if we're gonna yeah. if you're gonna play him in cash game i get it um for tournaments though he's got to catch fire 
if, if, God, if he's going to pay off the price like man. he wanted to. Yeah, it's just – it's hard to get with. Do you have any interest on this side? All year, man. All year. You look at this like – I mean – where's the tournament upside i guess but every in every game someone goes off like reed shepherd sitting there at 8200 we know he's a, an absolute baller gonna be a, a top draft pick i mean just high rates uh stock stock rates so you know reed shepherd uh definitely someone that i've interested for sure the rest of this squad um like dillingham you said he had 35 off the bench like yeah that's he yeah. It's a thousand dollars overpriced for, <laughs> but I don't know. Like these guys feel like absolute contrarian tournament type plays because could Reeves go for forty? Yeah, sure. Could Shepard go for forty, forty five? Sure. Could Dillingham go bonkers again for thirty five, forty? Sure. But it's like, man, it's only might only be one of these guys because then you got to mix in the all the front court guys. I mean, the Trey Mitchell's back. You know, the arrows there. Like DJ Wagner's there. <laughs> There's so many guys on this Kentucky side. I have more interest on the Tennessee side that gets paced up. And obviously, who do you think we're going to start with? Dalton Connect. He's uh, 8,300. And uh, we're probably looking at a 45 to 50 bomb here. And a lot, a lot of people are going to be clicking this button, which means for tournaments, kind of intriguing to, to maybe move away. Um, there are a lot of options on this Tennessee side that can get it done. But, man, he just – just an absolute beast. Like I would take him in the top 10 of the NBA draft. Like he's <laughs> yeah. just a monster offensively. Just so many things he can do. Uh, so yeah, I'll be going to the well early and often, but I will have some, some contrarian lines where I'm moving to Ziegler. I'm going to play. And we did this the first time these teams played, we played connect uh, on a lot of our lineups, but then we also, I, I think I believe if I remember correctly, I went 50, 50 on this thing. It's a guy Ziegler went absolutely bonkers in this spot you just mentioned uh, the 13 dimes that he had uh you know kentucky struggling a little bit to contain lead guard so uh zakai ziegler at 8k like i definitely have interest now that the price is starting to trend back down uh you love it because he put up that 56 piece um so yeah while a lot of people are going to go to connect maybe some people will go to ziegler but i feel like the ownership difference is going to be just completely one-sided there especially with how popular connect has been uh, on the national scene, I think Jonas Adu at uh, at 7,200. I feel like Jonas Adu is interesting for tournaments as well. I don't mind a stack where you leave Connect off. I'm not advocating. To, he's obviously Connect's a core tournament type play. But if mm -hmm. you want to get different, Ziegler with Adu as a stack, uh, I think is certainly interesting. It's 15-2. Uh, very, very sneaky type play. Uh, he's got double-double upside. He's got 35 to 40 fancy points upside if he gets his stocks. So, a lot of priorities at the top here, but Jay, we mentioned the guy that uh, has a cheap price tag uh, that's certainly going to have a role on this slate. It might be a little popular, which is Ooh, kind, yes. kind of Santiago, scary. <laughs> Santiago Vescovi, 4,600. There's the value guard, another value guard that Jason was talking about that we've got to at least consider him here. He's shown 4X ability a few times here lately. He put up 22 fantasy points in 30 minutes in their first matchup. I really dig that. And of course, it's senior day, and by senior, I mean <laughs> senior citizen because he's been there for 20 years, and he's already that old, it feels like. <laughs> but no, senior day for Viscovi, uh, I think he's going to have – we've got to at least consider him here. Secondary value type play probably, but, um, I mean, yeah, I think we we at least got to consider Viscovi here. And you're talking about a stack. Uh, you're talking about a stack. Um yeah, maybe not even secondary. This uh, this this Vescovi's got to be somebody like that you're considering in your value pool, I guess, immediately. Especially if you want to get to Ziegler, and you know Ziegler and Vescovi in this one, even Connect and Vescovi if you wanted to stack that way. You know, it, 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 there's some options here on this side. Uh, I know, you know, with this total that's implied here, there's going to be some some real life points scored, which again, like you said, leads to the actual fantasy <laughs> points. So Vescovi definitely has to be there. Three dollar pancakes. In, you know, like, yeah, yeah. Hey, we can hope and dream. So yeah, to your point about like whether first or secondary, points. I I think uh, just kind of circling back on your point on that. Yeah, I like the mid tier builds because the upside, but the value plays they're not like they're not just jumping. Like we're playing Vescovi at forty six hundred, which is not that safe. I know he went for twenty two, but man, how many times has he just disappeared from these games? Yeah. So, like, while he may be a core piece that we have in tournaments in cash, like, it, 
you don't have to use them because we know the downside of this guy is absolutely real. So, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, at this price, though, in this total and the senior night, although we love to we'll take a walk down Meredith Street, you know, and I'll do it. I'll do that any day of the week, <laughs> especially at 4.6K to mix them in. Yeah, let's let's do that. Like you said, he's he's that core type player. Um, but again, it's it is kind of scary. Yeah, and that's what you that's what you get sometimes at this price. Uh, let's move on now to Kansas and Houston. Oh, triple J ceiling, game. not double J, not J E double F J A double. Yeah, I guess we left double triple J, J off. We so. did leave. We did leave triple J off. That's triple three percent. That's Josiah doing James there. So uh, I think a lot of people are going to leave him off. So if you're feeling like Jason, it might be a good time to invest a little bit in triple J. Hit those like and subscribe buttons for us. We appreciate y'all hanging out with us on a Saturday morning. Let's move on to Kansas. How often do you see this sort of a number with a plus in front of it by Kansas's name? These are Ken Palm. We obviously go off of Ken Palm's lines here. You could probably get them for, for plus eight on DraftKings. But uh, Kansas, uh, yeah, it's Houston, though. But this is when you see that sort of a number next to Kansas' name, when they're on the road against the Houston Cougars. Um, in the early February matchup these two teams had, Kansas was just red hot and, and, and won by like 13 which was, which to me now to, to see that Kansas won by 13 the first time out, and now they're like eight to 10 point do, uh, yeah, dogs <laughs> on the road against Houston. That just speaks to the quality that Houston brings here. The first time out, Cryer had 24 uh, real, life in, uh, real life points, I should say, for the Cougars, and Roberts had a double double with 11 and 13. Dickinson, my guy, Hunter Dickinson, had 28 and 20 points, eight boards, and four dimes the last time out uh mcculler did tweak his knee after coming back last game so that's obviously questionable and one of those injury bits that we are uh, paying close attention to it looks like kansas is at 8.5 right now oh god man i i don't know i'm just gonna probably have to hop on that but mike start with this day <laughs> off side and and um man <laughs> It's against Houston. We always said we're crossing everybody off when they play. <laughs> Does that hold true for the Jayhawks? I think so, man. I think so. Ish. Because um, it's a hammer game and a contrarian type spot. Maybe you can get here in some large field stuff, mass multi inter stuff. But Houston, the number one adjusted defense. They play at a slow pace. Road game, senior day. All the, all the narratives are there uh, for Kansas to get run over here. But I mean, talent-wise alone, these teams match up better than eight and a half, I feel like. Dickinson, 9,200, contrarian tournament type play. Um, you know, had a nice game against them the first time. It's an ugly price tag. That's, I mean, when they have all those 8K guys and then David Jones only 500 more, like, what are we doing paying 9,200 for 100 Dickinson? Now, McCullough, right, like he's – he, uh, out for the year, it's you know two a week ago, and comes back, plays, does a good game. Now he's it's questionable. It cross off for me at seventy eight hundred. Uh, Johnny Furphy, if he is crossed off, uh, had that hot shooting game, thirty plus fantasy points against him the first time, but you know hasn't hasn't done much recently. Obviously, some of that has to do with McCullough returning. No man, there's just not a lot on this Kansas side that I can really feel confident about getting to, and a lot of that has to do with the Houston distracting <laughs> defense uh, clouding my mind. Um, on the Houston side, Jamal Shed, uh, 8500. I think I crossing him off too, which feels that feels terrible because he does have 40 to 45 fantasy point upside. This total at 136 though, like this is definitely ugly. I mean, the reason to play him is that he plays a pile of minutes, has a high steal rate, um, high assist rate, high shot rate. Like he's got upside to get there. It's just, you look at the two, um, the game that we just talked about, and I'd rather spend my money there. We're talking, when we talk about the next game, I, I kind of really want to spend my money there. We talked about the earlier games with higher totals. We'd rather kind of spend my uh, money at those spots. So Jamal Shed, he's okay at 8,500. No, I mean, the colors getting the update here. Uh, hopefully, plays. I mean, from Matt Tate on Twitter. <laughs> I don't, I don't know what that means. I think for that reason alone, because it's so volatile, and I'm setting my lineups. There's not going to be a lot of pivot options. A ton of them later on. You know, you get some maybe Tennessee pivots that you can get off of. But why would you want to mm-hmm. do that in this ugly spot? So, is there anybody on the Houston side? Shed, Roberts, Sharp, any of these dudes? Yeah, Roberts. 
I'll look at Roberts and GPPs. He's a slate smasher when he goes up. We know this. Like, and I think <laughs> yeah. I think Price is going to keep people away too at seven point five k. When you look at the rates, though, thirty percent combined rebounding rate and a seven percent combined stock rate. That's the upside that we're looking for. Yeah. Again, we're looking for commas, not comas. Okay, so if we're looking for commas, Roberts is a guy that can definitely give us that comma uh, in the old uh, DraftKings account and he uh he double doubled against kansas uh last time out so um yeah the upside's there i think we got to consider roberts at this price and yeah bill self saying oh we're we're hopeful we're hopeful that mccullough plays i'm hopeful he plays too bill okay <laughs> but that doesn't do me any good here so we'll see we yeah, are our, our friend of the show matt tate uh, i think if he i think if he plays there. then you could just completely wipe off. I think Kansas is almost a wipe off anyway, a wipe off anyway. And just to be plays, it just means that <laughs> cross everyone off. Happy Jamal shed day, Micah Feltman. Micah. <laughs> I mean, Micah, like, it's okay. I just, I mean, I would, there's just other spots in the AK range, uh, namely the Tennessee guys, uh, and namely John L Davis that I want to get to namely the Alabama guys. So you're going to get Jamal shed for no ownership and <laughs> in tournaments. That might be a very, very good thing. Definitely, definitely. And the last good thing, not the last good thing that we're going to get to, but the last game on this slate, I should say, that we are going to cover is Miami at Florida State. So hit those like and subscribe buttons as we transition into this one. A 153-point implied total here. These two played back in the middle of January, sort of an up-and-down game between these two. The Seminoles won it on the road, 84-75. to Like usual, the the Seminoles played like 47 guys <laughs> and wa- walked every time 15 for them for the Hurricanes pack had 19 real life points and Omir had a nice double double with 15 and 15 these are the type this is what nightmares are made of Mike <laughs> uh, with these two teams usually in terms of finding them on our DFS rosters but this game environment uh, is a little bit more intriguing yeah, I mean, I like the game environment. I, but it's like, who do you play? We've been doing this with Miami. It's like Kentucky all over, but just a little bit lower pricing. <laughs> Both defenses are pretty poor uh, defending a three, so should be a lot of three balls. Should be a lot of assists being handed out. Both teams being carved up, especially the Miami side being carved up. Norchad, though, at 8,200, I have a lot of interest in. Um, we know he's got 30, 40, 45-plus fantasy upside here. I mean, Florida State on the struggle bus, um, when you consider not only uh, defending the three, which Norchat's been very good at knocking down you know, the limited three balls that he's taken, but also controlling the paint. That goes with rebounding and stopping the two-point shot. So, yeah, absolutely love Norchat here at 8,200. Don't uh, Another guy in the 8K range that I don't feel like a lot of people can go to had 15 and 15 in the first spot, has upside for uh, more on the scoring side and also on the stock side in this game. Uh, we love Norchad on the eight and a half boards on prize picks. So I would absolutely lock that up. He had 15 in this first spot. Cam Corrin, you know, these guys inside for Florida State, they're not going to keep him off the glass. Uh, so as long as he doesn't get into foul trouble, that's the only way I don't see him getting to eight and a half, at least nine boards in this spot. Should be a lock for an easy double double here. Uh, all these other guys on Miami J, it's like Florida State. It's just kind of ugly here. Uh, Poplar came back, played a bunch of minutes, yep. 6,900. Like, where's the tournament upside? Nigel Pack, interesting. Came back, didn't play a lot of minutes. He's 5,700. If you were to play 30-plus minutes, though, you would have to consider him. Uh, more of a kind of a stay-away side for me outside of Omir. Um, is there anything else on this side, man? Uh, hey, so I'm not feeling it. <laughs> you, you, know I'm outside of Omir. About, you know I'm always going to talk about Matthew Cleveland because I've said – for the long, all season, from the moment that it happened, and, and any, any chance I've gotten to this season, that I can't believe that this guy was able to transfer within the state. It's one of the like in terms of a, from going from Florida State to Miami here. I thought it was such a big get for Miami, and that has shown more in terms of real life player than than fantasy upside on this Miami squad. Cleveland means a lot to to this Hurricane team on the court, but it's tougher to get to him at 7k especially but he's a contrarian option for sure uh i i think that you've got to consider him especially because i'll go you know I'll, I'll, go down, I'll go down narrative street any day of the week, <laughs> like i said earlier in the revenge game here for 
for Cleveland is is in effect. So I think you got to consider him at, at 7K flat. No need to worry. My accountant handles that. Anybody on the Florida State side at all? Ugh, God, like just just disgusting. Jameer Watkins is 8K, and you know his rates are nice, and he has 40 fantasy point upside, but. I don't know, man. Like, Miami's just been so poor defensively. Like, he has to be another 8K guy for contrarian tournaments. Uh, Mama Rock's asking here, what's wrong with Pack back from injury, no minutes? Yeah, I mean, it's just so many options on Miami side. You have Bensley Joseph there. We didn't even mention him. Uh, Kaishon George is there. Like, Miami's got a lot of dudes, and it's sad that we're not going to get to see them in the tournament because I actually thought Russia construction-wise, they were, you know, I know, I know they lost Wong and Jordan Miller, but. Uh, yeah, I think just ramping his way back in from the old lower body injury. <laughs> but I think Omir, really the only like play that I would strongly consider here, uh, Jameer Watkins for contrarian type tournament settings and hammer uh, type settings here. You can say very, very poor Miami uh, squad here. Uh, back to the prize picks. So, yeah, we love Omir uh, over the eight and a half boards and then also Wade Taylor uh, over 16 and a half points, which we mentioned earlier. So, why don't we get this thing wrapped up here in the next uh, couple of minutes here, Jay? What else we got? Wits jumping in the live chat here, and it popped up on my phone too. No Ryland Griffin today. He's been ruled out. Uh, any yeah. adjustments Any adjustments to make there? Does that affect anything for you, Mike? No, no because there's 15 other guys that are going to play in that game for Alabama. So really it's Sears, Estrada going to play 35 minutes, and then it's like handing out between five and 22 minutes to everyone else. <laughs> yeah, for so sure. Maybe a, maybe a little bit of a boost to Reitzel at 5K if you want to get different in tournaments, but nah, not me. Yeah, totally understand. Uh, those two more prize picks we just dropped on you there uh, recently. Omir at 8.5 boards and Wade Taylor at 16.5 points. If you missed our earlier prize picks, we're going to cover them all right after the core fours here. So let's get to those core fours and more, of course, a cash core and tournament core, we we gave it to you at the top. We're giving it to you here at the end of the show as well. So, Mike, start with the cash core four. Yeah. Uh, so, value options kind of kind of ugly. You know, uh, you love them if they're closer to four K, but uh, a lot of those options are closer to the five K range. Um, I guess the best of the best, uh, more of a, but still more of a secondary type play to me because the only the game environment keeps Santiago Vescovi. And the way that they played, obviously, this game went to 200 points. Like, it's only projected to get to 163. So, you know, obviously, that game went out of control. But Vescovy, if you're looking for value and you want something that you would consider maybe – it's tough to even say safer because of his downside. Um, this is a guy that can go out and literally put up 11 fantasy points, and Jordan Ganey gets a little more run in the spot. But the Santiago Vescovy, for the purpose of this, I mean, you can look at Obaseki, you can look at Momsilovich for value in these spots. But Vescovy, definitely a cash lock for our uh, – uh, for our value play here, Dan Skillings at 6,200. Just love the matchup against West Virginia. He's at home. West Virginia can't guard anybody. Wade Taylor, uh, I know he hasn't been great recently, but he's 7,500. Uh, still taking a ton of shots, still playing a pile of minutes, still has a high steal rate, still has um, <clears throat> a high assist rate for this team. And now the ball in his hands a lot. Love his floor uh, being in the high 20s. So, guys, Ziegler, uh, love his floor as well. Obviously, he smashed with upside against Kentucky for 56 fantasy points, but at 8K, uh, you definitely like that he's going to bring you at least probably 30 fantasy points in this spot for tournaments. We're gonna we're gonna stick with with, with Vescovy here at the 4600. Um, probably the safest, like we said, of the value type plays. Uh, Matthew Morell at 6300 uh, going up against Texas A&M. I know he completely burned us. Uh, was sick last game, but you don't find very many guys at this price tag that have a 40 fantasy plus uh, upside. So uh, look for look for him in a tournament settings where he's probably not going to be. That highly owned, so give you some leverage there. John L. Davis at 8,100 in the smash spot against Memphis, like I talked about earlier, didn't play very well against them the first time. It still almost got there. So if he plays well at home this time, he's going to absolutely demolish them for 40 to 45. I would even say 50s on the range of outcomes for John L. Davis. Dalton Connect, you know it, you love it. It's 8,300. It's tournaments. Like you, you, you love the, the maybe the stack with a couple of Tennessee guys against Kentucky here. Mm-hmm. It's going to be very, very, very popular to play Tennessee guys today. Uh, so Dalton Connect rounding out our core four in tournaments at 8,300. Loving that. What does that leave us with? Uh... Yeah, it looks like it's popping off here for uh, 5675. You're probably going to have to find 
another value play, but well, we knew that we knew that coming in. We were gonna have to. It was gonna have to be. We we're gonna have to dig to find that value, and we'll find it. You know, I think that's a, that's pretty decent to work off of when you when you got a core there and and mix it. You know, Vescovy or whoever it is that you're gonna you know value wise. You know, rotate those those cats in there uh, and start your lineups with these fine young gentlemen. Let's call back to all the price picks we dropped throughout the show. Uh, first of all, like these are we're going more everything more more for, core four and <laughs> more and more 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 on the price picks as well. John L. Davis more than eighteen point five points. Wade Taylor these are real life ones. Wade Taylor more than sixteen point <laughs> five points. Joel Soriano, the lone holdover over there at that squad, 8.5 rebounds, more than 8.5 rebounds. And no ch- Norchad, I got Norchad Omir, more than 8.5 boards as well. So Soriano and Omir to go over 8.5 boards. Wade Taylor, more than 16.5 points. And John L. Davis, who happens to be in our tournament core four, more than 18.5. And Mike said earlier he feels confident Davis is a lock to crack 20 real life points let's get one more thing before we get out of here mike a couple of best bets that we dropped earlier that's what nate our guy nate c hustle was dropping earlier what are the best bets we have for the day yeah i like clarence daniels and new hampshire uh if you haven't seen him play he's been fantastic uh, 20 and 10 type player in the america east so new hampshire minus one over bingham 10 and then although we do like cincinnati to uh to score a bunch of fantasy points I think I like how the way Jesse Edwards is playing, you know, Raekwon Battle. We got Kirk Creaser there for West Virginia. It's the Big 12. Um, plus, the Big 11 and a, yeah, plus 11 and a half for West Virginia. Uh, Big 12 games very rarely get out of hand. I know some of them have been the West Virginia games. But I'm, you know, Cincinnati, both of these teams are down towards the bottom of the Big 12. Uh, so I like West Virginia to give me some double digit points with them. So plus 11 and a half. Don't mind that at all from the Mountain ears for sure loving it make sure you smash those buttons for us thanks for hanging out with us and spending time with us on this saturday morning mike anything to close the cell before we sign off Nah, man um <laughs> it's gonna be you can play some of these value plays you get up to the top man but don't forget these mid-tier guys with with a lot of upsides so you may only play one value you know so it looks like recently it's been one value play one high, uh, high tier guy and then just living in that mid-range so both options viable. Check for the news. Obviously, here we got about 50 minutes until lock. Got We're going to have to wait on some news, see if we get anything surprise pop up, see if we can get a guy under 4,500 that really makes this thing go. <laughs> no doubt. Plenty of time to work on your lineups now before lock. Uh, we appreciate everybody hopping in the live chat. It's been on fire. Tommy, Mike, Forklift, Jeremy dropping the fire flames in there, the flame emojis. In there, everybody, we appreciate Tommy, Mike, Forklift, Jeremy, Mama Rocks, of course, Jason B, Eric, the Blue, Ryan Gupton, Nate C. Hustle, everybody that's hopped in there today. Anybody, and the kid was hopping in there earlier. Leon joined us this morning. Man, we really appreciate the Green Screens Media Universe hopping in the live chat, hitting those like and subscribe buttons, and doing your part. Now, do your part for yourself. Plug those lineups in. Let's get this bread, baby. Choo. Thanks for stopping by the office. Get your fantasy prescription by subscribing to the channel and checking out drrodo.com. And until the next visit, be well and take care.